dear learners uh, now we'll uh, see something about uh, snake rescues and also know something about the myths and realities associated with the snakes and also some other reptiles which is very common in Iran so coming to the first uh, starting with the snake rescue you know um, snake rescue happens in uh, in, in, in mainly in two ways there is some of the wild snakes which they come in the house and they got trapped in the house they cannot go and there is a lot of hue and cry in this way and then another group of snake rescue happened because from the snake charmers because government of india now banned the charming of the snakes and in that way a lot of snakes are still caught and different ngos and forest department they catch the snake and uh, we get a lot of snake from the snake charmers so uh, coming to the wild snake which go, go inside our houses these are the different uh, species of snakes python red snake bandit snake cobra killbag so of this maximum numbers in assam or in guwahati around city so python is the most important uh, species which get rescued in this way and there are lot of other snakes which are from the snake charmers so snake charmer snake consists of those species so what happened is uh, we uh, in many NGOs or in other areas what happened whenever there is a rescue from the snake charmers we generally uh, the people concerned they catch the snake and they release the snake but this should not be done this should be avoided in the because the snake charmers used to catch snakes from different areas and they come to northeast suppose in Assam they are displaying snakes but they, the, the snake they caught is actually from Bihar or in West Bengal or in other parts of India. So what happened is these snakes are not inhabitants of Northeast India. So uh, in this way, if you release this snake, which are non-native to Northeast India, they will simply die or uh, else uh, they may replace some native species of Northeast India. So the snake charmer snake should not be released in the wild. So other way, the snake uh, which are got into our houses from the wild, we can directly uh, consider releasing them in the wild. And also, you have seen there are uh, in in our newspapers and TV channels always there is a picture of uh, python rescue and people catching python and showing it and taking photographs. So what happened is their idea is very good. Uh, idea is to save this species, save the animal and release it in the wild. But in the process of uh, getting recognition in this way, the animal suffered. You can see yeah, they tied the snake in this way and they are showing it and somebody pulling it, pushing it. Uh, so in this way it broke the neck or they get injured and then they are released in the wild, then they, they will not survive. So the basic plan is if you get in uh, a snake, you should not uh, just uh, um, uh, show it to uh, all the people and this is a case of novice uh, rescue which should not be done professionally and there are professional like uh, well, rescue should always happen with the knowledge of forest department with the knowledge of uh, other um, organization who are dealing with uh, rescue and release of the snake and particularly for the python because python is a protected species and is protected under wildlife protection act and is a schedule one animal equal to the schedule of uh, tiger so uh, python should not be handled in this way should not be you know uh, rescued so uh, it should be done with the forest department so because it is a schedule one animal so um, then um, snake rescue actually involves so many processes if there is an injured snake we should not directly go and release it it should be treated in the um, it treated in the zoo or treated in the veterinary uh, office or colleges then when we, it is fit then we can consider releasing it then uh, if it if a snake is is fit then we can directly consider it releasing it but there is another uh, criteria for releasing it if you are getting a snake uh, in Guwahati, you cannot you cannot release it in the uh, uh, because the Brigor is too far from Gohadi. You should look for a place which is near to Gohadi. And it should be a suitable habitat where the snake, uh, the criteria is that, that the area you select should be near to the place of rescue and the area you select should have that species earlier 
and the area you select should have uh, abundance of prey bait what snake eat. So, these are the criteria which makes a uh, successful snake uh, rescue and successful release and in this way it will uh, going to contribute a lot in conservation of snakes. Coming to uh, snake meat because snakes are the animal which, uh, which uh, probably has most number of uh, myths associated with it. So, uh, there are so many myths because probably there are uh, then our knowledge on snake is very much limited and that is the root cause of all these myths because a myth develops when we do not know something and since we do not know about snakes, its ecology, its biology, its lifestyle that is why these myths occur. So, one of the most famous myths uh, regarding snake is that we say uh, snake suck the milk from the cattle udder, snake can drink milk or suck milk, but is it possible? We, If we see this is the tongue of the snake, so uh, tongue of the snake is very thin and it is bifurcated, but uh, for to suck a milk or to uh, drink milk you need a very wide tongue like uh, what we have, what all the mammals have. So, snake do not have that kind of tongue, so it do not have any suction pressure, so how it can suck the milk from the other. This is the simple question. So, this is false actually, snake do not drink milk. What happen is, snake charmers are the people who create this kind of meat because that helps them in uh, getting money from people. So, in Nag Panchami area, um, time and all, they uh, take, uh, they uh, show people that snake actually drinking milk. But what happen is, they keep the snake for a longer period of time without water. And in that particular day, they go different houses and they show the snake and also they give the uh, milk to uh, to the snake. And in that, because snake was very much trusty for a long time, then uh, for to just to uh, just for the water requirement, it is actually drinking the milk. So in that process, people come in to uh, believe that they drink milk. Then another very famous myth about snake is that. We believe this is a sand boa and snake charmer says it is having a double head because but actually if we very closely see because what happen is we never see a snake closely. So, if we see it closely we will not realize that its tail is actually very blunt there is nothing like tail here. So, it is very blunt and head is also it matches like a head. So, that is that why that is why people say that 6 months it has got uh, Man, um, head this side, this side, all this kind of false belief which is uh, wrong and then snake charmers what they do, sometimes they draw eyes here and also cut a little bit of the tail to make it a mouth and in that process they display to the people. So, which is false, no, no normal animal can have a double head in this nature. So, and then another belief is that uh, snake dance with the music. So, this is as you know. Uh, this is actually a creek of the snake charmer where um, snake when it is raised up, uh, raise up uh, it's, uh, in a threatened posture. So, then the, the snake charmer is always moving its um, the uh, flute in front of the snake creating a kind of sensation for the snake and also uh, he, is, he will produce a kind of vibration with his legs on the ground. So, in that, that vibration will keep the snake erect and this uh, snake will be following the movement of his flute and in that process he will be dancing. So, it is not that he is listening the song and dancing, but it is the snake which is actually in a threatened posture and following the movement and this, uh, this can kind of thing can be done with, uh, with any other instrument with the cobra, not only flute. And then famous uh, we have the most famous film here, the Hindi film where it is Nagina, a film where they have shown that uh, snake take revenge. So, if uh, one snake is killed, then another snake can come and uh, kill that person, which is completely false. Um, this is actually uh, only a film, um, it is a thought and which is not true scientifically because no animal, uh, no snake comes and take revenge and there is uh, nothing like snake never 
stay male and female stay together for the long time and it, it falls because only in the mating time male and female snake come into being and then they go, go apart again. So this is also again, again a misbelief. What happens is sometimes you know in the mating season where there is plenty of snakes available like in places in Nagaland and all these forest areas. So what happens is they, they secrete a kind of uh, substance which is known as pheromone. So that uh, pheromone might be a reason why when you kill a snake then that pheromone gland ruptures and there are a lot of pheromones around and with that uh, pheromone then some other snake might be coming. But this is a normal process. With the scent of pheromone, a um, lot of, uh, it's natural that other snake will come around if it is nearby. So that's probably is the root cause of uh, this that snake take revenge. So with this, uh, we came to an end of the snake myths uh, and uh, also a, a portion on snake uh, rescue.